today I thought we would take a look at this. Uh, this one from uh, uh, you may have seen me install or this one install from one of the um, from my house from another video I did the other day about the seized water pump. Uh, this water pump is a Siemens is it half horsepower? I think seven amp half horsepower water pump. Uh, and I removed it because it is, well, it's not quite seized, but it is certainly on the way to being seized. The impeller won't spin at all. Well, it will spin, but very, very slowly. Uh, and it's drawing like, I don't know, something, like, something stupid, like 30 amps or something when it's trying to turn. Uh, I think, look, this. Mexico has very hard water. Uh, this is the impeller or the impulsor or whatever you want to call it, and it's really kind of stiff and it does actually spin better in one way, in one direction as opposed to the other. Uh, and it spins that way, according to me and this impeller. Um, anyway, the point of this video is I thought we'd break it down. Um, and see if we can find out what the actual problem is and hopefully rebuild it. Uh, I did take a course on uh, rebuilding water pumps and it's kind of easy. It's <laughs> ridiculously uh, less complicated than I thought it would be. This motor is an induction motor uh, which is pretty much, it's brushless, completely brushless. It's only got one moving part. Um, has two field windings, uh, despite the fact it's got this coming in. Actually, has two field windings. Has a start winding and a continuous run winding. Uh, uh, for that to happen, for the, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make a little drawing and I'll put it in the video. The for the start winding uh, and the uh, the run winding to run. Uh, out of phase, uh, which is what they need to do to actually for the initial <coughs> to start the motor. What they need to do is because the electricity goes to both windings normally, under circumstances, the electricity would go to the, to the live of both windings at the same time. Um, we need the uh, run winding, or oh, is it the start winding? I can't remember. We need them out of phase by 90 degrees, an angle of 90 degrees. And to um, to achieve that, one of the the uh, start winding goes through. What is it? The run winding? I can't really remember. One of them goes through uh, this capacitor, and what this capacitor basically does is it momentarily absorbs uh, the input to one of the fields uh, to one of the windings, and that sort of it's like having uh, two hose pipes um, powering a water wheel, um, but you want one of them to have a slight delay. Uh, in powering the water wheel, imagine this is a water wheel, you have two pipes raining water onto the water wheel, better like this, two inlets, but you want one of them to start slightly later than the other, even though you open the tap to both of them at the same time. So how do you do it? You put a small reservoir for one of them above the water wheel, which has to fill up before it can empty onto the water wheel. Effectively, this is what this does, it momentarily absorbs the uh, current voltage uh, from the input uh, which allows the other one to just uh, to fire up to, to start the initial and then the uh, uh, this one overflows and it, then it adds its input to the uh, to the uh, to the fields as well um, but since you can't have both of them run at the same time I will try and make a little demonstration of this you can't have both of them running continuously. Inside here, there's a centrifugal switch that when the motor gets up to speed or to a certain speed, it breaks the contact to the to the start winding, so only the run winding uh, uh, runs continuously. So I'll have a better look at that one to take the cap off it. Uh, first thing I need to do is uh, take this impeller off. Now this impeller is only screwed on, and it does. Yeah, it's, it's only held on with a thread, no nut or anything, it's just screwed on and the actual counter-rotation of the motor 
keeps it held in place, keeps it locked in place. Now, of course, if I just try and undo this, the motor's going to turn. The motor's going to turn. So, in order to stop this spinning, we need to somehow jam the shaft uh, that the impeller sits on. And how that's done is, you can actually get a special tool, exactly tool, like a big socket. Uh, that fits over here, and if you can see in there, there's like a, a screwdriver slot in there. Uh, but I don't have a socket this big. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I made this little uh, piece of bent metal tool, which fits in the slot. In the slot. Uh, nice and tight, because we don't want it to jump out. And this, as you can see, turns with the turns with the impeller. So what we need to do is we need to be able to turn this impeller this way. So we need to block this this way. And how we're going to do that is uh, okay. The impeller is finally loose. This was <laughs> a lot tighter uh, than actually thought. Um, but how I actually got it loose was by um, heating it up with a torch, with a blow lamp. Just heating it up nice and hot. As soon as it got smoky hot, a big blast of WD-40 to contract it down. And uh, after that was done, this old blunt axe inside this slot and just a couple of whack 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 and <laughs> so much internal friction as well as mass inside the um, inside the pump but this bad boy just just came off so that's good So this is the impeller, the brass, you can see where it's uh, been marred with the axe, but that's okay. That will tie it up nicely. Now, as for the pump itself, this is the seal. It's an active rotating seal. Um, it has a spring inside. Let's try and see it here. Oops, can you see this? Yes, son of a bitch in its position. There's a spring inside here, and what happens is the spring, the uh, the seal is a ceramic rubber seal, uh, and it is uh, it wears as the pump operates under normal usage. It wears so yay thick when you buy one new, the bearing surface, uh, and what happens is this here little spring keeps a constant pressure, forcing the um, the, 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 the seal against the backing plate uh, and against this little shaft here. This is a rubber piece here. So we, we will actually replace this as well. Uh, but for the life of me, I can't remember how to get the bleeding thing off. Uh, actually, I think all we need to do is separate the pump from the house and here, and the whole thing will just lift off. But I don't want to do that just yet because. I want to have a look at the uh, electrical side of it first. Uh, so let's open the let's open the capacitor housing. Capacitor. Uh, before we go any further with this capacitor, um, just for information, before you ever start pissing about with them, always make sure it's discharged. And how do you discharge a capacitor? Just by touching the two with any metal object, at best insulated, just to make sure it is discharged, which this one is. Now, uh, when I first started fiddling with these things, I was never sure which way to connect these 
the spade connectors on the capacitor and it makes no difference you can connect it however you want if you get the clips mixed up and you put them on the wrong way around it, it makes no difference to the operation of the machine all thanks to alternating current right this is the capacitor uh, you see that it is a it is a Abram electro electrolytico 168193 it is an Abrams capacitor electrolytico 168193 MFD 110 volts uh, CA 50 to 60 Hertz Echo in Mexico Corona de Mexico Numero uno. I guess that means numero uno. Who knows? All right, so I'll replace that anyway. Um, okay, so what we'll do now is we'll take the end cap off the pump. Oh, first of all, do I need to take this off? Can I undo this? No. The big problem with this is is that many of the screws are just chewed up either from age or just shitty quality but it's a Siemens pump so it should be okay can I I don't even think this screw's got a head on it no there's no slot left in it it's corroded away so it's back to the uh, alternative screwdriver now unfortunately for me the grips can't even get a, a hold on it, so I'm reduced to pure savagery. There's my new home depot chisels. hole because I don't want the bleeding screw to fall inside. Yeah, it's off. Ah, doesn't matter, I can drill and tap that later. Let me see. And cover plate. Yeah, I know could have left it on, but I don't like doing that. Went out the way. Right, so the gubbins inside. Wire colours. So we'll now take the oh, these are body length screws, these go all the way it's actually loose. <laughs> these go all the way through the machine and clamp the whole case together. I forgot to do. Before you ever split one of these cases open, always mark it so you can line it up. Yeah. And what we'll do is we'll compound that with a So the end cap goes back on correctly. Right, that's the cap undone. I'm trying to use this little boy off. Baron, nice and chunky. 
It's also extremely okay. Right, so if I can pick up this camera. Right, this is the this is the centrifugal switch here. Uh, the bad boy uh, that turns off the primary winding. Now, bearing of course, which is in remarkably good condition, considering. So if it's not the front bearing, then it must be the seal that's causing the problem, unless there's actual contact in here. Bearing retainer. I see the adapter goes behind here. Right, let's have a look where these two wires go. AC wires, so it really shouldn't make a difference which way they're connected up. Right, you go to this one and you go to that one. And take some pictures of this before they take it all off. Now I've taken pictures of all of these connections and so they should be good. Um, what I will do though, just for good measure. Ugh, the pencil's got my tip. Mm. So what I can do is now at the start is connecting this. So these wires are pretty chowdery. God, I hope these bleeding. I hope these windings are all okay because I'll check them with a the multimeter in a minute. I hope they're okay because I really don't want to have to rewind this motor. It should be okay because even when it though it wasn't ten, when if you connected it back up, it was still like it was trying to do something. So what we'll do is let me just just connect these. Okay, there's the cap removed. Uh, this is the centrifugal switch. It's pushed up and down here, on and off, and that's activated by this. Like this. And this comes up unless it spins out these weights. Ah, I can't see them. There's some weights. Where are they? In here somewhere. I have to pull this bearing to show you. Uh, there are some weights in here that when they spin out, let me pull this down. It's like an old fashioned steam engine, and that turns off the, uh, the star coil. Like that. I'll check the switch out. Bearing really is okay. Damn. And the springs and the switch is good and tight. Oh, that's okay. Should give you a better look at that. Right, now. Because all these wires are undone, this actual case, uh, <laughs> apart from the screws holding the things together, can just be separated. So what we'll do is, these screws here, I think you can see, reposition the camera. These screws here, take these case screws out. We can separate the. Uh, well, do we need to undo them? Let's see. Oh, no, we don't need 
don't need some. There you go, separated. Now, this is the windings completely removed. We'll take a better look at them later. This, of course, is the cooling fan, which break a lot when the insects get inside them. And this itself is the rotor proper, and that is super tight to turn it. Yeah, so can you hear that? Right, with the case out the way. We can see a better look at the uh, centrifugal switch. See? When it spins, 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 they fly out. It's pretty powerful though, I don't remember seeing that one that powerful. Okay, and where was I? Yeah, can you hear this? Yeah, so I see that the seal, or the bearing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these two pieces of case here. Right, that's the nuts taken off. Now, I can't for the life of me remember how to get this out. This is the ceramic part I mentioned before. It's nicely broken up. Actually, it wasn't me that did that. You can see it's pretty, it's pretty manky in there. Well, maybe that's the ceramic part then. So, just give me a minute while I force this thing out. Okay, I've probably screwed up really here because I think this is the actual ceramic seal white thing here oh, God. I thought we smashed it and cracked it so I might as well just continue until it's out Do you know something? just after taking that seal out it spins so much easier already let's have a look This is the ceramic seal. Well, monkey. Well, 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 monkey. 
so I need to that will definitely have to take some cleaning and replacing and this shaft here is oh dear that is scoochy as fuck however there's no play in the bearing and the bearing is replaced by removing these two screws removing this plate uh, and then this plate of course just lifts up and the bearing is inside but unfortunately and you can see this this fucking shaft is all too to fuck uh, now i'm not sure where the bearing surface is for the seal i'm not sure whether the seal sits here or down here if it sits down here it was screwed we need a whole new arm which i might as well get a new pump this shaft can't be replaced separately. Fuck. So what I'll do now is I'll clean this up and I'll try to remove these screws. Oh, sounds kind of chewy. That bearing sounds kind of chewy now. Yeah, maybe the water did get into it. for believe and look, believe me. Can we get your friend? Uh, your friend's got... No. Also, apparently, I found a a quick way of releasing these seized screws is to put a screwdriver in the slot and then just a sharp wrap of the hammer. Not only does that help clear the head, it breaks the corrosion on the thread and then uh, we got it. Now there should be a plate here. Unless I might have to use a puller on this. Oh, got it. No, no place, just the uh, cap directly onto the thing. And this is the plate. Oh, there is a plate it's on the bottom here, as you can see. So you can clearly see water penetration here. You can clearly see the water ingress here. And this is the bearing. And she is as fucked as fuck can be. Ah, oh, bollocks. And this shaft is just as shitty as fuck. Why does it have to be the front bearing? Can I even get a puller in there? I don't know. What I'm going to do is I'll clean this up. God, that's pissed me off no one. And this shaft has got me concerned. It really is chewed. Uh, uh, I'll clean it all up as best I can and I'll leave some penetrating on this bearing on this bearing shaft overnight but it's that corroded I can't even tell if it's got a ceiling clip let's give it a quick run Uh, 
and best home to spot wire bush. I'll get at this with a machine later to give it a better finish, a better try on but let's see. Quick rubber, what I think we can understand is that the, the inner race of the bearing here is definitely uh, sitting on this wider section of the shaft here, which is good. God, I wonder if that one's screwed, that'd be great, wouldn't it? So, I can't see a retaining clip, so I think it's just going to be a case of the. Uh, I can't even heat it because of this plastic bleeding fan. And I said destroy the fan and get a new one. Ugh, I don't know. Let me check first. Because if this if, if we can't repair this shaft then it's a it's a moot point. Let me clean it up some more and we'll get back to it. <laughs> 